This podcast is brought to you by Most Valuable Podcasts, leading the league in podcasting entertainment. What's up, what's up, everybody? Ricky Widmer here, along with at the Mark Weber. Dub them easy. See, I decided to do that now. I was watching Kind of Funny, actually, who mm. both me and you know. And Greg Miller goes at Tim Gettys, and I'm like, instead of saying the Mark Weber, yeah. why not just say at the Mark Weber since it's your Twitter handle? And then on Rick and Johnny, you can say at War Machine, whatever the last number is. <laughs> <you can> say <laughs> Johnny. Yeah, I don't say it. You're the, you're the only Twitter handle that I say. But welcome into another edition of the Onside Kick right here on Most Valid Podcast, your one stop shop for everything in the NFL realm of things. For here at MVP, got a jam packed show for you guys. Going to have Patrick on here to start talking about the Chicago Bears, and then we're going to continue our fantasy football rankings. You missed wide receivers last week, Mark, although you did give I your voted. rankings. Yep. And this week we're doing tight ends, so the top 30 tight ends we'll dive into. But before we get into everything, a little bit of housekeeping here at the beginning. Number one, if you want to support us, want to be on a podcast like Pat is today, make sure to check out patreon.com backslash Podcast. Also, if you want yourself an MVP t-shirt, head to look over. Didn't remember if Mark wore his. That shirt, that store link is down below in the description. You can also get that at mostvalopodcast.com along with everything for MVP each and every day. And last but not least, if you are on Apple Podcasts, you're on iTunes, make sure to give the onside kick and all the podcasts as MVP a nice five-star rating and type in a little bit of... Uh, why you like us or why you like checking out the podcast. But we're starting off today with the Chicago Bears. Patrick's a Bears fan. Mark's a Bears fan. The Outcasts, check out them. They're Bears fans talking about Bears each and every week. And I like the topic that Patrick brought up for us today. It's basically, are we overhyping the Chicago Bears? There's a lot of hype with Matt Nagy coming in. Mitch Trubisky in year two, you draft Roquan Smith, everyone's excited about that. So Patrick, I'm going to throw it off to you right away, right at the top. Are we overhyping the Chicago Bears? I think we are overhyping the Bears this offseason because they did address a lot of needs and they did address a lot of the things that they were they said they were going to do. They said they were going to build around Mitch Trubisky and they've done that. My issue is now that we've brought in all these guys to help Mitch Trubisky out, a lot of people are saying the Bears have the best offseason of the NFL. They're going to be L.A. Rams 2.0 after the Rams won 11 games last year after what they did to build around Jared Goff. And I'm a little more pessimistic about the Bears' chances to do that right after this offseason because I still think there's a ton of question marks around the Bears and the guys that they brought in, even though a lot of them do make a lot of sense and they can definitely help the Bears. We have yet to see them in the offense by Matt Nagy, so I'm not really sure that they can make that turnaround that the Rams did. And the fact that the Bears fans are like overhyping this team, saying, oh, we're going to be so good this year, we might win 10 games, we might win 11 games, we might win the division. That part makes me think, like, okay, maybe we're overhyping this a little bit because we haven't seen these guys play yet for the Bears under this new system. Yeah, and it, it's interesting because there's a lot of, there's always a lot of hype about the Chicago Bears. I mean, last year, um, I mean, even last year still, but last year there might have been a little bit less. But there's always hype about it. I know uh, on if you watch NFL Network's Good Morning Football, uh, it was the biggest Bears fans I know. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right. Uh, you got Kay Adams from Chicago, and you know she's saying that they're they're the dark horse team for her to make into the playoffs. Uh, and that's not an uncommon thing. It comes up every once in a while of being these teams that might make it, and. The the fact is, you got to remember that this is a team that was five and eleven last year. Mm-hmm. They've got a brand new coach, uh, yep. brand new offensive coordinator. Fortunately, the defensive coordinator stuck, and there are a lot of good reasons to be hyped. And we're not going to ignore that. That this is actually, you know, this was a top ten defense last year. This is a team that has a lot of weapons. They went and they grabbed things. This is a team that got. One of the hot young uh, uh, um, offense coordinators to be the head coach, they got a lot of things going right. But yeah, I mean, you definitely are right that I think it's just the pump the brakes type of moment. I mean, this was the, I'm pretty sure if I'm not wrong, uh, that they were last, if not second to last, in just passing offense mm-hmm. last year. And part yeah. of that's John Fox. But still, you know, this is, we're not, we're not going to have, 
Mitch Trubisky just suddenly go out there and look for sure like Jared Goff or look like an Aaron Rodgers, just absolutely controlling that offense and dominating defenses out there. It takes time. I mean, there was a good quote today um, where I'm pretty sure it was Matt. Yeah, it was Matt Nagy that was saying that Mitch is building his own library now within the offense. No, he's building it. It's not built. Mm -hmm. It's not done. It's not ready uh, on today that we're – let's see. We're recording this on Tuesday, and this article I think came out – Last week. Last week that they're talking about this, and they were talking Mm -hmm. about last week there was a really bad day of practice. And even the offensive coordinator coming out and saying, yeah, this was a bad day. Mm -hmm. That's what the team has, and that's what the team's going to deal with through the season. They're going to have bad days. They're going to have good days. They're learning. They're building. Well, and I mean, I think the big thing for me is that if you guys do not hire Matt Nagy and don't get rid of John Fox, we're not having the same hype. Like, if John Fox is still the head coach coming into this year, it's a low-light season for me. But because of... All right, we're getting Matt Nagy coming in. Mitch can now grow in year two. You get uh, Vic back for the defense. You get the um, Roquan Smith, the kind of infusion into that defense. There's a reason to be excited. Like, Bears fans, I don't expect Bears fans to just sit there and go, well, this will be another wasted season. Like, Mm -hmm. I don't know if there's any fan base besides maybe the Jets a little bit, not even them. Like, everyone this year, I feel like, has a little bit of excitement in their own way for their team, but here's the thing I'm thinking of. When Matt Nagy started in KC compared to Chicago, what are some of the differences? Yeah, the defense, I would say that the defense might be, like this team is overall younger than the team that him and Andy Reid started with. 2013 is when Nagy started in KC. This team is younger than that KC team. Also, Instead of a Mitch Trubisky, who is a year two quarterback, he was getting, yeah, it was Alex Smith is or going to be Alex Smith's first year in KC, but Alex Smith was already a quarterback from 05 to 2012 at that point. So he was a guy that, although his career in San Fran wasn't number pick or number one pick level, and he was getting replaced by Colin Kaepernick at that point. He still was getting a guy who, all right, this is a veteran who at least knows who is the coming league. off of one of his best years. Yeah, and I believe didn't he get benched in one of that best year? Like he got well, injured, he then, got hurt, and then replaced by Colin Kaepernick. And then yeah. Kaepernick basically stole the job from him. So there's that, and then for me, I think there's also the thing I look at is the schedule. Like Green Bay is going to be tough. You play them twice. Vikings are going to be tough. You play them twice. I mean, I know with the Vikings, you guys always really play us close in Chicago. And then in Minnesota, we usually win that. That's how I think it's been for the last at least two years. But then there's like Arizona could be tough this year, either with Sam Bradford or Josh Rosen week three. The Patriots, that's a loss for me. Lions is a toss up and you get one of them on Thanksgiving. And then it's like three of the... Let's see, the last three non-divisional games you guys play, the Giants should be better than last year. The Rams are a team that many people are saying are going to win the Super Bowl this year. And then you get San Fran at San Fran, which we don't know what Jimmy Garoppolo is going to do. But if last last year was a little bit of a sample, 16-0, and 0, that's what they're going to do because Garoppolo don't lose. That's a joke, by the way. Don't take that seriously. But do you think the schedule at all, Pat, is what I'll ask you. Do you think the schedule – should kind of bring Bears fans down to earth. Like, okay, we could see growth, but don't be surprised if we go 5-11 and or 6 or 10 with this schedule this year. I think it should definitely bring some Bears fans down because a lot of those teams beat the Bears last year. Like, no, they didn't beat anybody in their own division. They somehow win four games against the AFC North. However, they still have a completely different set schedule this year where they have to play teams like New England. They have to play Tampa Bay, who beat us last year. They have to play Seattle, which we don't know what could happen in that game. We could win. They could win. That could be a toss-up. But I think the schedule should definitely do a good job of like helping ground Bears fans and also realize that with those games, there's going to be a lot of growing pains of the Bears learning that new offense and the defense continuing to get better even with a lot of pass rush questions currently with the Bears. So there's going to be growing pains, and it's not going to be a 
smooth sailing right out of the gate. And it's interesting with this too because they're those first two games are both primetime games. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, and now the second game is Brandon Marshall's homecoming. That's very true. Oh, that's very yeah. true. Although completely so different team. So, uh, but anyways, it's interesting here because you know there is a lot of hype that's being built, and of course the media are gonna mm-hmm. you know have a bit of that too, talking about Mitch Trubisky because it's exciting. Yes, he didn't look great in his rookie year, but the there's thing, still a lot of things that you're excited about. I'm gonna cut you off, and I'll ask both you and Pat. This is the Outcast, which go check it out. It'll be right above Mark's head, hopefully. Um, if I did things right. What did you think of – they talked about, like, Mitch's comments from last week where mm-hmm. someone in the media asked him, like, that the offense was behind the defense and he kind of just, I guess, snapped a little bit and was like, well, who said that? Who said that we're behind? And, like, showed a little fire but got a little fiery and a little uh, snappy with the media. Do you like that? Do you not like that from your starting quarterback? Go ahead, Pat. I don't mind it from my starting quarterback, to be honest. Like, I think that he's – like very passionate about wanting his, like his offense, his team to learn the offense and get better at it because it's a new offense. It's a new, more complex scheme that they ran last year under Dow Loggins' predictable offense. And I think he takes a lot of pride in like, we're making progress. We're making a lot of progress. So when I think when someone comes in like, oh, well, you guys are like miles behind the defense. Like I can understand like getting a little chippy about that. Like he was like uh, snappy about it, but he didn't like full on yell at him. So I didn't, think of it as too much i just think he was just very passionate and he's been described as like a very passionate guy in the locker room so that doesn't really truly surprise me about mitch trubisky but it doesn't worry me to be honest yeah i think it could be one of two things i mean the one thing is exactly that i mean he's just passionate he's going to defend his team uh you know you kind of want that out of a player you want that out of a leader the other thing is potentially it could have just been that it was spot on and then and he you know it was just a sensitive area for, mm-hmm. for them to talk about. And that could be a good thing. It could be a bad thing because this is barely, you know, I mean, this is still off season. This is not preseason mm-hmm. yet. So none of anything that's really happening right now matters all that much, you know? And, and I, I know that you build upon things and everything like that. And, uh, you know, Tom Brady himself has talked year in year out about how important OTAs are. Uh, but, the thing that's here that we need to really worry about is just are they learning? Mm-hmm. It doesn't matter if they have a bad day. It doesn't matter if it's – and that's any team. It doesn't matter about that. Almost like are you also, learning from your does mistakes? the win and losses not matter just as long as the team is making Better. progressions yeah. each and every week? Exactly. Well, they don't matter yet, but mm-hmm. soon they're going to matter once we actually get to the season. But yeah. right now, they don't matter. Yeah, and I think it's worth noting, too, for, for a team like the Chicago Bears that's pretty fresh, pretty mm-hmm. new. There's a lot of new faces, a lot of new coaches, the new, new-ish new quarterback, uh, that as long as it's better than last year, you know, as long as your passing game is not the worst in the NFL, mm-hmm. as long as your defense continues to be good, as long as you can score points, you know, would six wins be better than five? Fan- yes, that would be great. Um, is it the end of the world if somehow you end up with five wins again or four wins again? No, because then you're at the top of the draft, and as long as things look better, as long as you were competitive, that's what matters. The thing that was great about the Chicago Bears, um, and this is going back even further too because this was the reason why uh, Danny Trevathan wanted to come play for the Chicago Bears. Mm -hmm. This was a while when he signed that, but last year – They were in a lot of games. Mm -hmm. They had the opportunity to win a lot of games. And that's worth noting just because of the fact that, you know, I know, Ricky, you and I love to play the one possession game. One thing could have changed it around, Mm -hmm. and then this record's completely different. I did not want the Chicago Bears. As a fan of the Bears, I did not want want them to win. You didn't want to go 8-8, 9-7 because then you're in the middle of the first round. I didn't want them to win very many games. (laughs) I wanted them to lose games because they were not not a team that was ready Mm -hmm. to win yet. See, and that's why I'm almost on the side. Of course, if I was a Bears fan, I wouldn't want to see my team lose. But would it be necessarily bad if the team goes, I'm going to throw out between 6-10, and 4-10, 12 area and it's like okay we saw progression this year from this team but we getting out another top five top 10 pick to get someone who can maybe help the offense maybe help the defense in some way and honestly the range that I gave is what I see because this is coming from a non 
Bears fan or Bears um, shaded glasses, you're not beating the Packers at all this year. The Vikings, I'll say, you'll like I said, you'll play us tough at home. I see the Vikings winning both games. The only teams that I could see you beating, maybe at Arizona, because I'm not really sure what we're going to get from Arizona, but I'm leaning more towards Arizona in that game at Arizona. Tampa, I think you'll beat every and AFC East team except Tom Brady you're going to beat, so Dolphins, Jets, and Bills. And then maybe you win one game against the Lions. Like, that's that's your six. If not, you're at five, you're at four. The one thing I think, though, is don't be surprised week 13 through 17 where it's Giants, Rams, Packers, Niners, and Vikings that those are all L's to end the year. And it's like, well, we just got to the death lineup at the end of our season, and it was just playoff team after playoff team. And it's Mm -hmm. like, okay, we're not ready to compete with those playoff teams yet this year or in general because we're not there yet. Yeah, I think as a non Bears fan, do mm-hmm. you see them beating Seattle or no? Seattle's interesting. I'm saying like it, it's interesting because it's in Chicago, but I mm-hmm. I'm saying no because yeah, the defense is coming down a little bit from that LOB that we like to think. Plus they also Richard don't Sherman. travel that well. They don't travel that well, but I will give I in that game I will give the nod to the better quarterback and it's nothing against Mitch but Russell Wilson's a better quarterback than Well Mitch, Mitch isn't at this a proven point. quarterback yeah. yet. So yeah. I'm yeah. going to give it to Russell Wilson to find a way to win that game. That could be one where it's like hey maybe the Bears lose in Lambeau, play really good at home the next week but it's like wow we lost by a touchdown, lost by a field goal, mm-hmm. but Seattle was just able to kind of sneak out a win in Chicago week 2. I think you kind of have I would say seven or eight Mm -hmm. fairly winnable games on the Bears' schedule. Uh, If they steal another one from the Packers, maybe, or from the Vikings, maybe Kirk Cousins' transition is going to be rougher than Mm -hmm. we all think it will. You know, if they steal a couple of those games. The Vikings is week 11. So I hope Kirk Cousins has transitioned by week 11. Hey, sometimes it takes a whole year. (laughs) It's not the first time a quarterback has taken a whole year to transition. If it's taken by that long, I'm hitting the panic button. I'm also hitting the panic button. Fully bit. guaranteed contract. There's no room to panic on that thing. Well, let's uh, test Ricky's panic. <laughs> yeah. Right, it's Super Bowl or bust this year for me. But at the same time, you know, they could just plain old steal it. Mm-hmm. You know, you never know what could happen. Well, and that's why the one at home, the one in Chicago, mm-hmm. I kind of am like, I wouldn't be surprised if the Vikings lost that game because you guys usually play up for it's like that like in the nba where you get that nothing team where it's like oh we we're gonna play up to beat the warriors today that's what you guys get whenever we come to town especially since the book has flipped and we've been the better team Mm -hmm. over you guys yeah i just think that there's there's a fair amount of winnable games here i fully expect the the floor for the chicago bears i think is probably six Mm -hmm. the ceiling maybe nine maybe nine wins um and I think that's getting potentially a little optimistic about stealing a game mm-hmm. from a team. But I think there's nothing wrong with being in the middle because right now, when you look at last year, the Chicago Bears were a bad team. Mm-hmm. They were a bad team that was competitive. And people might say that those are two separate things, but they're not. A bad team can be competitive. You don't have to be uh, you know, the 0-16 Detroit Lions uh, or to, Cleveland Browns. You can well, say I was actually going to say the other thing about the Cleveland Browns because they were at least competitive in a few games. There Especially were a few games the they could have won. Um, but, you know, they had some bad things happen mm-hmm. there, bad coaching. But anyways, you can be a bad team that was competitive. If the Chicago Bears can now move to a decent team that's competitive, mm-hmm. that's a win. Because then next year you can be a good team that's competitive. It's just all about taking these steps and strides, and you can't expect to be the L.A. Rams Mm -hmm. and go from being a bad team to a competing for a Super Bowl type of team. Is that worthy, and Patrick, I'll ask you this, is that really where the overhyping comes from that a lot of people, like you mentioned in your opening comments, is just like, all right, we got Matt Nagy, Mitch Trubisky's here. It's basically like when Sean McVay went to the Rams and we're going to be just like them playoffs this year. I think that is like my main point of concern because whenever you look at something in the media, wherever you hear people talk on Twitter, they immediately make that connection between the Rams and the Bears. And those to me are two different contexts. Sure, they've built their teams around the same way and they've had very similar circumstances, but I would not make that direct connection that just because the Bears kind of 
followed the Rams model, that the success is immediately going to go to the Bears. Because the Bears, to me, the Bears play in a much more competitive division right now. Boom. Where Bingo. they're at the very bottom of their division. And they have the Vikings and the Packers and the Lions, who are both, who are all really good teams. And they, they have more of an uphill, to me, they have more of an uphill climb than the Rams did for their season. So the direct connection, the direct parallels to me, always bother me a little bit because I just don't think that they're exactly the same, even though people often make that connection between, oh, they're doing the same thing the Rams did. They must be better next year. So that has always concerned me about that team. And also the players that the Bears have brought in this year do have a lot of, to me, they have a lot of question marks. You know, people make a big drill, for example, about Trey Burton coming over and him being that option at tight end. But he also only played, which I read, 345 snaps last year, and Mm -hmm. that included the playoffs. And to me, that's a lot of hype to put on a guy who did not play a ton last year. Now he's expected to make this big contribution, and you just handed him a four-year, I think, $32 million contract to be that guy. But he hasn't really proven it yet. So there's a lot of potential, but there's a lot of, like, they have to also prove it within this new system. And I don't, and I think that's also part of the reason I think they're overhyped this year. Well, and with Trey, we're going to talk about him later because he's going to be in our, spoiler alert, he's in our top 30 for the tight end fantasy rankings. And the one thing I'm glad you brought up was the division, because that's to me, yes, like when you bring up the Rams of last year, there's a lot of parallels that you can say. New young coach like um, McVay coming in, who's going to spark this team and give new life to it. You've got a quarterback entering year two who had an old coach who was probably past his prime, Jeff Fisher, a la John Fox. And Probably you also, passed his time. <laughs> and you also have, well, I mean, at least uh, John Fox wasn't doing no, uh, what, what, what seven was and it? Nine seven bullshit. and nine bullshit. I, I was thinking it was either seven and nine or eight and eight. Nine and seven, or seven <laughs> and nine bullshit. Um, but the thing that you mentioned that I was thinking is the division. This division that we're in, that my team's in also, Vikings got to the conference championship, added the hottest free agent quarterback this year. Super Bowl expectations. You have the Packers who, yeah, they lost a few pieces in the offense, kind of shuffled that around, but they've got the, depending on who you talk to, it's kind of like the LeBron James, Kevin Durant debate between Tom Brady and Aaron Rodgers. We've even talked about who's the number one. And really in most minds, it's the Packers have the number two quarterback in the league right now. So you have that. And then the Lions are kind of, even though they're there, they're still a competitive team, whereas the Rams last year had a Seattle team who's falling off. You have Cliff Averill this week saying that, yeah, you know, the locker room basically pretty much turned after that Super Bowl loss, that decision to kind of throw it rather than run it in that Super Bowl against the Patriots. They're coming down. You also have the 49ers were coming up, but they weren't ready to make that leap quite like the Rams were. And then you have the Cardinals, who the Cardinals were in a state of like, how did you get like this? How did you get to this point? Because you think back years ago, I think it was when you guys hired John Fox, the Bears had the decision to go with Arians, who was in Arizona. That was uh, Mark or, Trestman. Or that was Mark yeah. Trestman. You had yeah. the choice to do that, but you went with a Mark Trestman. I don't want to open up that can of worms of who you rather have had, but – that also ended, and it basically, with the Carson Palmer injuries, kind of put the Cardinals near the bottom of that division. I know that uh, San Fran was actually the bottom of it. They didn't get Jimmy Garoppolo until later, but the division was a lot different in the West is what I'm saying, which kind of helped the Rams mm-hmm. kind of expedite that process yeah. for them. And and, it, and you never know because there's a lot of question marks in, in the beginning in the offseason and mm-hmm. stuff like that. You know, the the Lions have a new coach. The Vikings lost their offensive coordinator, who was a big part of making those quarterbacks very mm-hmm. successful. Uh, you know, Aaron Rodgers lost one of his favorite weapons. He and also Jordy. gained one. You know, the Packers' defense is probably better this year. Mm-hmm. They really invested in it. Uh, supposedly, the Lions have a great defensive mind. The Vikings got one of the best quarterbacks. So mm-hmm. there's a lot of pluses, minuses, yeah. just like for the Bears. You know, still the offensive line might have a few little holes in it, mm-hmm. but they have. All these new weapons of really talented players. I mean, they arguably got the number one targeted wide receiver in free agency. 
Uh, they have a great weapon in Anthony Miller that they drafted and kind of a lot of people were saying is a bit of a steal. There was one commenter on our uh, fantasy rankings last week that said, don't be surprised when he's a top 10 receiver this year. I will be surprised, <laughs> but I will be pleasantly surprised <laughs> if it happens. But, you know, it's just, all these teams have good things and bad things that happen. And I think the thing about Chicago and maybe every market is like this and we just happen to be here in mm-hmm. Chicago. But everybody gets excited. The Bears are always a team that gets hyped up. You also and they get, typically ex- you get excited let until your down. team starts losing regular season games. So I kind of feel like with the <laughs> Chicago Bears, just be happy with some progress. Mm-hmm. And I'm all for it. You know, we haven't played any games yet, so my prediction is always going to be 16-0. Mm-hmm. But Super Bowl, Super <laughs> Bears. That's right. But don't be upset if they go... Seven and nine. Mm-hmm. That is okay. Well, Patrick, yeah. I'll let you end the segment with just basically your final thoughts on everything just to put a bow on it. Well, my final thoughts, I guess, would be, yes, we made a lot of great progress in the offseason. They addressed a lot of needs. Some needs remain. But I know as an NFL team, you can't address every single need that you have in one offseason. That's just not realistic. But I also want Bears fans to me or realistic about the schedule that we have and the fact that Bears are having to learn this new offensive system. And Matt Nagy was talking earlier today that it took him about four or five years to like fully implement to his system in Kansas City for all of his players, and then they started making a lot of changes to it. And the Bears are being asked to do this within months, not years. And I want the Bears fans to be very realistic about Hey, this we're not we might not be a playoff team this year, and that's okay. We might not have the expected jump that all this national media is promoting, but that is okay. If we ended up seven and nine, like you said, that's okay with me. That's that's showing you're making progress and you are continuing to move forward after years of being a losing football team. So my final thoughts would be we're making great progress, but don't expect playoffs this year, because I think you're gonna be disappointed. Well, and the camera shuts off going a little bit over, but hey, we love long segments here on the Onside Kick. This is where you guys come in, though. Let us know what you think down below. Are we overhyping the Bears? Also, go check out the Outcasts. This past week, they talked with the Bears. It'll be going up this week where they looked at the Mitch Trubisky comments. Last week, they did their season, their game-by-game predictions for the season, so go check out that as well. If you are a Chicago fan, Thank you for Patrick again for coming on the podcast. Thank you to all our patrons. If you want to be like Pat in the future, go check patreon.com backslash most valuable podcast.